Hello everyone, I'm back again. I'm back again with another book review. Uh, I think this is going to be my last one for today. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to do any more today. I can't think of any other book reviews I haven't done. So, uh, but these, I thought these were important. I, I never did a book review on it. And I, I just don't know where that went to. I don't know why I never posted a book review. That was just so big because I, when I order books, I'm ordering them back to back. And then I make the mistake instead of reading and then do a book review. I end up reading them all at one time. Then forget to come on here and give you guys a review. And I apologize about that. Uh, my name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. I run an online metaphysical store. Uh, chemistry. I'll leave a link down here for you. Uh, I also do uh, spiritual readings, tarot readings as well. I do them in person and online. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I think Google Plus too. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, this is a really good book. Uh, Finding the Soul Path to Arisha uh, by Toby Malora Correll. I think that here's a picture of her. I'll show it to you. Wait, here she is. This book, oh my gosh. If you're developing a relationship with your ancestors, and uh, it's been really hard, uh, you know, because once you start under your ancestors, she described it so beautiful. It's like picking weeds out of a garden. You know, you got to... Uh, uh, get past, you know, it's bittersweet, you know, uh, developing a relationship with the ancestors is bittersweet as in any spiritual practice. Um, and you have those ancestors that you do not have resolve with and that you really don't know how to elevate them. And you really, y'all really didn't uh, resolve any issues or anything like that, uh, y'all issues before they passed on. Uh, maybe that ancestor uh, really offended you or violated you and you just could never get past it. Uh, this book helps you with that. It helps you with those ancestors that just were difficult to love. Okay? And she talks about those ancestors, you know, when they cross over, uh, those are the main ones who really want to uh, redeem themselves and help help you, you know, and you just have to uh, find ways to uh, mend the relationship, you know. Uh, and, and she she tells you how she went through her her how she how she how she did you know picked her garden and how she went through it and how it's important to uh, pray for the ancestors. That's what this is all about. This spiritual work is not easy because some of the things that we have going on with us. Uh, it's because our ancestors. It, it's because of that, that DNA has been programmed like that. Uh, what you may call generational curses. And, and it's us who have to break them. And heal them. And restore our family to their natural state. You know. You have the responsibility of doing that little grasshopper. You know. Yeah. I, I just said it like that. And so it's our responsibility to, to fix that. You, you, that, that's what it's about fixing, you know, that's what this, uh, about honoring the ancestors is, is healing, you know, and, and that healing brings so much happiness with all that support, uh, that you, uh, get from honoring the ancestors. Uh, you do so much, you just open up a floodgate, uh, of spiritual warriors and, 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 and support when you start under your ancestors, but at the same time, there are some that need more prayer and need to be elevated on the other side for their spiritual evolution. That's how this works. I'm trying to get you to understand. I know some of this might be over your head, but once you understand the spiritual realm, that one day we will be very, very soon. That's why it's very important for you to get familiar with it. Uh, it's, very for you, it's, it's very important for you to understand uh how this, you know, your spiritual lifestyle works and how spiritual growth works, okay? If you want this to be a, a part of your life and you want to be a, a, a good person, uh, you know, I like this book. I, it was phenomenal. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll read a, let me see if I got a summary. 
in here I can read for you. Okay, I'll read this summary for you. I just like this book. And it just touched me. Uh, I think I bought one from my mom. I love this book so much. Uh, and she lo she loved it too. Uh, this book got good reviews too. This book got really good reviews. Uh, you know. So if you're working with your an ancestors. And, and, and you just uh, start connecting with the Orisha. Uh, and, and, and that's one thing too that you see in Ifa. That you're going to see in Vudun. Uh, I know you think it's all about honoring Elegba, and it's all about working with, uh, a, I, I feel I need to say this, uh, Azili Frida and all these other deities. I know you think it's about that, but really it's not. The more majority of, of African uh, spirituality is about first honoring your ancestors. You do that before you work with any of these other deities. Yep. I mean, there are many prayers, and the more... You, you pray and elevate those ancestors, the easiest gonna the easiest gonna be for you to work with Elegba, uh with Israeli Frida. You know, I don't I don't see many videos like that. I see a lot of videos telling you how to work with these deities, but I don't see a lot of videos telling you how important it is to for you to establish a relationship uh with your ancestors be, before uh you can work, you know, uh very closely with these deities. Okay? And then in fact these deities are not going to work close to, close with you until you have a better relationship with your ancestors. That's what this is all about, you know. And then Elect Bud will open the door for you and let you work with other ancestors. And he, he is the guardian to the ancestral world, you know, between this world and that where he got his foot in both worlds. And he's the gatekeeper. And so when you, because eventually is. When you start talking to your ancestors more, you're gonna you you're gonna work with Elegba is more uh, uh more too, because you're gonna you know he's the he's the gatekeeper, he he allows you have that that uh, unlimited access to your ancestors, that's just the way it is, if you understand your your spirituality, uh, there's always a crossroad deity, okay. Uh, but I'm gonna read this for you. Uh, I was in my early 20s when I first discovered these words. In those early years of my spiritual development, they were like gold for me. With the simple clarifying grace, they spoke to my deepest yearnings for a life of reverence and bore the promise of blessings. I knew the tradition I held. Yet I was full of questions. How do I let God flow through me? What if I don't like the feel of God's breath in me? If I'm angry or sad, or those breaths still prayers still God? Though Mason's word resonated with me, I had no idea how to apply his teachings to my daily life. I had found a spiritual path that beckoned me, but I had no map or compass to guide my journey. My spiritual guidance came from my mother. Though she never took my brother and me to church or espoused a particular religion or spiritual doctrine, she taught us that God lives in all things, especially in nature. One of my sweetest childhood memories is of my mom pointing, pointing out of the wonder of blossoming tree as we walked. Together one spring afternoon as saying to the tree, look how special you are. Thank you for being so beautiful. My mother's hunger for spiritual knowledge and her constant struggle to find and stay connected with accessible, generous, divine presence were a prevailing influence throughout my life. She studied metaphysics, metaphysics, the tarot, her favorite being the death card, which says death paves the way for new life. One of the favorite deities was the, was the Hindu goddess Kali, who transforms via annihilation. And you know, Kali is nothing but uh, the same as Oya in the Orisha. I, I need to make a video on that too, because I need to make a video on that too. But uh, who transformed the via annihilation? Her fascination with rebirth through death would later deeply affect my own spiritual work. When we were growing up, Mama also kept altars which were made of, of simple, carefully selected place representation of divinity shells, candles, rocks found in sacred places, a special swatch of cloth 
a prayer handwritten on the pretty pretty paper. My mom reference for the natural world for creativity had profound and lasting impact on how I would worship as an adult. Although my mother emotional anguish often distracted her from her children's need, she encouraged my intuitive nature in small but significant ways. When I told her I seen a man standing in the air, she acknowledged I seen a spirit and asked me to describe him. And when I confided my fear of group of bullies of the, of the bus stop, she taught me how to make myself invisible and how to move danger away from me. She told me the intentions was the essence of magic. She also admonished me to do others only, do to up, do unto others only, what I would want to come back to me, because come back it would come it would three times over. Shortly after my graduation, my high school, my mom took me to the ritual led by one of her co-workers, voluptuous and kind-hearted Wiccan priestess. That small gathering under the ancestors sparked the beginning of my conscious intentions to pursue an earth-centered spiritual life. But my mother's Wicca friend soon moved to Great Britain, and I didn't know how to find the spiritual guidance I craved. So I continued to feel called to a spiritual life and yet adrift at the same time. Then I began taking African dance near the studio was a botanica, a store for practitioners of the Orisha tradition, and then most widely known for the United States as Santeria. One afternoon on my way home from class, I stopped in to browse. A feeling of familiarity of home filled me. The books and artifacts spoke of God and nature and of spirits and rituals and altars and magic. From that day forward, I read everything I could about the Orisha and soon discovered John Mason. Mason wrote a prayer wrote a prayer in a very different way from the other books up on Orisha. I was reading. His concept went beyond praying only in ceremony in front of the shrines. It extended further than petitioning the deities for assistance and giving thanks to the ancestors. It was prayer as quality of awareness and a state of being. In Mason's view, the world is a sacred landscape, seamless, connections, existence between God and all things in creation, between God and me. This was a spiritual path I could envision myself walking along. It was a, it was a prayer I could taste on my tongue. I immersed myself in literature about Yoruba tradition and soon realized I needed to study with an elder, but I had moved to a small beach town where none were available to me. So I continued trying to apply what I was learning from books to my daily life. I confided my fears, dreams to Yamaya, goddess of salt water, cycles and ties in my journal. I wrote little prayer poems to a legba opener door doors. I created altars like the ones with the child with the ones which I had grown up, but the Orisha or the ancestors, uh, but with the Orisha and ancestors in mind. Like my mother, I collect rocks, shells, and other altar pieces from nature and place them next to candles and prayers to, to the deities which I wrote and on a bright colored paper. Also, like my mother, I live with a gray cloud of depression hovering over me. My soul was in need of healing, and I began taking my struggles and pain to the Orisha. I'd walk to the seashores and mountaintops surrounding my home, praying simply and timidly. I'd think to myself, surely I am insignificant to these great deities. How dare I call upon you, Maya, mother of the world, illegal, illegal, the creator's right hand, without full knowledge and form, for, formal commitment to the Yuba tr tradition. Why should they pay attention to me when I don't even know the proper rituals and the right prayers? But despite, but despite my lack of knowledge, guidance, and experience, the Orisha were clearly listening. However, improper my sacrifice to Yamaya, Mother of Oceans, I could, I could feel her healing waters lapping against and smoothing the hardening places within me. However, inadequate my prayers were to Elegba, keeper of the threshold, guardian of the life force energy. He nonetheless responded to them. I always knew my solitary learning was in preparation for finding an elder to guide me deep into the powerful tradition. I know, I now believe that the most viable road to the Orisha is one charted by those who know the full depth breadth 
the power of the tradition. The best guys are Yoruba elders who've had extensive experience with the Orisha's rituals and practices and seen lives, particularly their own, transformed by them. Had the right teacher been available to me sooner, I would have jumped at the chance. Still, I learned some valuable lessons during the solo leg of my journey. The most important being that the strength and quality of my spiritual path were ultimately up to me. Even the most highly evolved teachers can't protect me from myself or do work for me. So, uh, like I said, this is a really good book. So, you're going to like this book. This book is Finding the Soul Path to the Orisha, uh, a West African spiritual tradition. Uh, this is a really good book if you're developing a relationship with the uh, ancestors and you desire to know more about the Orisha and you want to know how to work more with your ancestors uh, uh, with the Orisha. She gives a little knowledge in there about that. She's not as depth as the other book reviews I just did. Uh, you know, she tells you more uh, spiritually uh, how to connect with with these deities and uh, with your ancestors, developing these intimate relationships, spiritual relationships with your ancestors. So it's 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 not a how a a uh, 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 a how to uh, book so much, but uh, it's more of soul work on yourself and how to connect with these deities and these energies, and and showing you how to uh, identify them in your everyday life. So if if you're interested in that, in that it was a good book. I, I was not disappointed because a lot of what she was talking about, I could I could I could relate to so fully of some of the things I was going through spiritually. So if you're a newbie and you've been, you know, and you're very, very spiritual, this book might help you. Find the Soul Path to Arisha by Toby, uh, what's her name? Melora Coril. And here's a picture of her back, uh, back here. It's a picture of her, you know. So, uh, but I thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this um, video inspired you. I hope it empowered you. I hope it encouraged you. Uh, if you have a subject or a topic that you want to talk about, uh, please drop it in the comments. You want a book, you want to refer to me and, and, and uh, want me to take a look at it, then, yeah, uh, I, you know, I'll take a look at it. But like I, like I said again, thank you so much for watching Light and Love. Uh, may the ancestors be with you.